unlike men, a fragrance will never leave us. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition. And as a side note, that was a joke. So if there are any men watching, and there are a lot of men that watch my channel, then I do apologise. Actually, no, I'm not going to apologise. It's, it's just a joke. And why am I even justifying myself for that? Anyway, let's get back while I readjust myself into today's video. So I'm Gabby, the Fragrantician. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back, my little hunties. This channel is all about fragrance. We talk about nothing but fragrance, although I am thinking of doing an empties video because I do have a lot of empties. And lots of people, I think that's the only thing that I may well diverse from. But primarily, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is all about perfumes, our love of perfumes. Welcome to my playground. Wasn't there a song called that? No, this used to be my playground. No, that was Madonna, yes. No, welcome to my playground. This is my safe space where we can talk about fragrance. And I was going to mention something else, but another YouTuber <laughs> says that. So, and you know who you are if you're watching, because she does watch my videos. But anyway, welcome. I'm Gabby. What are we talking about today? We are talking about a big love that is not angel. So if anybody of you are thinking, oh my God, I bet it's angel. No, it's not angel. It's another love that I want to talk about that I've had an on and off love affair with for over 20 plus years. But I would say I've always loved this fragrance and I've stopped using it, gone back to it, stopped using it, gone back to it. You know, it's that something that you can never leave alone. And us as women, you know there are some things, and men, us as human beings, we just cannot leave alone. And this is one of those fragrances, one of those perfumes that since its inception, I have loved and will continue to love. So what is it? It is none other than Hypnotic Poison herself, if that does surprise you. And I'm going to talk about all the different variations I have. I have one, two, three, four different variations here. Um, yes, so different formulas as well. This is the newest formula and I have made a little bit of a dent in there. The best way is always tip your bottle to the side. Never underneath that way or look that way. And even when sellers are selling bottles and they see it upside down, I message them and say, can you please turn the bottle to the side? Take a picture. If they respond back to you, they're a good seller. If they don't, then beware. But that aside, this is Hypnotic Poison. This first came out in 1998. The perfumers were Annick Menardo and I think Christian Dussolier, I think. Annick Menardo, a famous master perfumer, she has done, I think she has over a hundred fragrances in her database that she has been commissioned to produce or herself produced. This came out in 98. It was a big, big thing at the time. I mean, Annick Monado, she's done perfumes for Giorgio Armani, Longcomb Hypnose, Amouage. She's done, I do believe she was the nose behind Portrayal by Amouage and another Amouage, mostly designers. And also I think she did Lolita Lempica 
the famous Lolita Limpica and the famous hypnotic poison. This, as I said, came out in 1998. This is the most up-to-date formula that I have. And I have several formulas. So let's talk about the newest one and work our way back. I have three formulas here. I thought I had four, but I have three. There is another one in between, which I don't have, unfortunately. But let's talk about the ones that I do have. So this one, the newest one. I'm going to spray a little bit here on my hand here. Now this, I'm going to say, this isn't the longest lasting projecting scent. However, if you layer this with molecule 01, moisturize well and over spray, it will project and it will have that old formula. Otherwise on my skin, this lasts about four to five hours and then I have to respray. And the projection is probably at just at an arm's length, just at an arm's length. And the sillage is after two hours, it then becomes a skin scent. So it's not like the beast it used to be, but it's still a moderate beast. It's, I would say, a, it's not diva mode. It's goddess mode or empress mode, if that's the word I'm looking for. But this perfume, it's classified as I want to say an oriental vanilla, or people say an amber vanilla. It is definitely vanilla. It's definitely nutty and slightly woody as well, I would say. It has some powderiness to, to, in it, to it as well, which I do love. And I think that's the powderiness as it dries down, as it dries down to that vanilla, that beautiful vanilla that this is famous for. The best, I would say, amber vanilla gourmand scent that I've ever smelt. When I first smelt it, it was heaven. And I'm going to say now, from the start, this is the closest, I would say, to the original formula, side by side, which I have. It has a bit of smokiness, but compared to previous formulas, and this formula is from 2021, so this is the most up-to-date formula, this is the most closest to the original in terms of sweetness. It's not bitter. This one is. This one is a 2011 formula, and this one is more bitter almond. This is more roasted almond, if I can compare the newest formula to the 2011 formula. I'll spray a little bit of my hand here. Now, I've let this one die down. So this is the newest formula. This is sweet, is slightly balsamic. It has a little bit, it, it has that marzipan feel to it. Some people say a Play-Doh effect, which sometimes I can equate to, and others say a root beer effect, which I have never had, and I don't know what that tastes like. So like ginger beer, I don't know what root beer is. But compared to the 2011 formula, this is much more bitter and slightly, it is actually, now I'm smelling the, the newest formula on this hand, the 2011 formula on this hand, and there has been another formula in between 2011 and 2021, somewhere down the route. I'm pretty sure of it. This has, this is fresher than the newest formula. So, now I'm comparing it. 
believe it or not, on my skin, the longevity is actually better with the newest formula than it is with the 2011 formula. This is a 50 ml, this is a 100 ml. As you can see, the bottle's here. This is darker, more ombre than this one. And this actually goes back to kind of its original roots where it's a little bit more see-through, which I'll show you the vintage ones in a minute. I would say I much prefer this formula. It's a bit more smoky vanilla bit more smoky vanilla but it's not oh my god it's smoky as in church smoky or it's tobacco smoky it's nothing like that it's just dare i say it smells a bit more niche kind of quality if that's the word although i don't do niche but whereas the 2011 formula it has more of this bitter almond and do you know what I thought this lasted quite a long time on my skin but compared to it no then this this one does so I'm gonna plump and say this one overrides this one they did make Dior did make two flankers of hypnotic poison so they made a flanker of a flanker because hypnotic poison is a flanker to the original Dior which has completely different DNA in it whatsoever. The one I have here is hypnotic poison au sensuel and they made another one called au secret which I think Melanie Laurent was the face behind the two, behind this one and Au Secret, which I sampled, I managed to sample. And I'm glad I didn't buy that one because it's a very, very close to the skin scent and lasted barely two to three hours on my skin. Literally, it was gone after two hours. The Au Sensuel does have that vanilla DNA in the scent profile but there is no almond here i'm looking at my notes down here it has more orange blossom ylang ylang and rose so it has more florals in this fragrance and it's more brighter so sensual it, it is when i say brighter it's it's a little bit more playful a little bit more playful, I would say this is. It has orange blossom in there as well, and I detect orange blossom. It's That's where the brightness comes in. But there's definitely vanilla, sandalwood, and it has a little bit of that woodiness, that DNA, hypnotic poison. I would say it has actually moderate longevity and moderate sillage. It's not a beast mode, but it's more of a beast mode than the Au Secret version, uh, which I'm glad I didn't get. Now, the nose behind this was François de Marchy, so it was a different nose behind this scent. Vintage Hypnotic Poisons, a 30 ml and a 50 ml here. I started with this little baby. This one is from 1998, the batch code, and this one is from the year 2000, this batch code. So it, they're th the original first formula. This, and as you can see, I don't know if you can see here, the writing so faint it's on the front and as you pop these together because it's spray painted with this matte it's like a mattified effect and it has the old cap styles like so which i love i do love them i love the feel of it i love the feel of the texture in my hands this rubberized texture i i love the feel of rubber for some reason, but there we go. So this 50 ml, let's spray a little bit 
on this hand or this, this arm. This definitely has like the original, like the newer formula. It has an almond vanilla feel to it, and it does project, and it does have lovely sillage. It will fill a room. You don't need to layer this with anything. I mean, I have even shower gel and body lotion that I can layer with this with, but. I'll only do it on a special occasion. Otherwise, you don't need to. This, this has, I've done now three, well, I've done a few sprays here, a few sprays here, and I've done three sprays of this. In this room now, What I love about Hypnotic Poison is after about five minutes when that vanilla starts to push through, and I've always said this, vanilla on my skin gets really amped up. That's why I have to be really careful with what vanilla scents I get because if it's mixed with other sweet notes, it is just too sickly on my skin. The almond is perfection, perfection. This could easily be a signature scent for somebody. Actually, I am. I have done a video about signature scents, which are, is coming up. But this easily has, you get the coconut in there, you get the almond, you get the vanilla. I don't really get any florals in this scent. I don't get any lily of the valley, valley, any tuberose, any rose, any jasmine. I don't get any of that. Maybe about a smidgen, 5%. But it's all about the vanilla, the almond, the coconut opening, and then vanilla and almond. And it's roasted almonds, like this one has, roasted smoky almonds. And it's really warm and hot at the moment. And I'm wearing this and I never thought I would wear it because it's temperatures of over 30 degrees, 35 degrees, and it's going to get hotter. That's 35 degrees Celsius and it's meant to get hotter. And I'm wearing this now. I'm basking in it while I have Claude on my lap here. You're smelling lovely as well, aren't you, Claude? This has been and will continue to be a, a lovely Huge favourite of mine. Huge favourite of mine. I'm actually going to say this one is going to be redundant. This one is now redundant. And this one I would buy again if they don't reformulate it again. Oh, it's just stunning. And we always use that word, oh, it's just stunning. Well, at its time, it became... When it first came out, there was nothing like it on the market. It's revered by many, hated by many. And I have a very good friend, and she knows who she is, does not like this at all. But I love it, and that's what makes us different. It was such a new kind of scent DNA, new scent profile, that then launched into the early 2000s and the mid-2000s probably the mid-2000s, the gourmand heaven that we see now, 20 plus years later, and the trend that we see now. I think this started the trend, and it's, in my opinion, not only the best vanilla almond scent, but the best perfume that I have in my collection from Annick Menardo. What is your take on hypnotic poison? I know I did a video about this about a month or two back about it, but I just wanted to revisit it and touch base on it because it's one that was worth the hype, was overhyped, worth the hype. It is worth the hype, in my opinion. And if you don't own it, Try and smell it at least, because 
the new formula, if you can, because I think it's it created a precedent of its time. It just a masterpiece, just a masterpiece. Been a huge love of mine for over twenty years, and when I saw those from a private seller, reputable private seller. I just had to snap it up because I wanted to compare them. I wanted to see what hypnotic poison was all about. Because as you know, the poison line from Dior is probably my, if not best flanker, number one brand line from Dior. The best line from Dior that I absolutely love and cherish and adore. So you've been watching another edition of The Fragrantition. Remember, spray with gay abandon, kill them with kindness, or in my case, kill them with perfume, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Cheap? Who are you calling cheap? What's that perfume you're wearing, catch of the day?